this movie doesn't need a a smart uh review yeah yeah but i think that it could get one it's gonna get one yeah from yeah, the, yeah with those glasses on your face it's the anime movie podcast with your hosts cat and joe Welcome to another episode of the Anime Movie Podcast, The Amp. We are your hosts. I'm Joe Welke. I'm Kat Hamilton. And today we have our first returning guest. I believe it's our first returning guest. Yes, yeah, it is. First returning Absolutely. guest. We've got uh, my co-host from Boys Watching Girls, the Boys Watching Girls Podcast, Mr. Vance Tucker. Hey guys, glad to be back. Yeah. Welcome back, Vance. It's so yeah. good to have you. Yeah, we- we loved your uh, contributions to the girl who leapt through time so much so that we were like, we got to have Vance back. Yeah, I was just so impressed you got Joe to concede things. <laughs> I, I'm just happy I was able to bring you two closer together a little <laughs> bit. You know, that's that, I didn't realize it was going to be like a, a marriage counseling session. But yeah, we needed a mediator for that one because yeah. there was yeah. a lot of opinions being thrown around all over the joint. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, yeah, we brought back Vance, and today we are talking about a movie that is quite controversial, quite considered a classic, I guess. I guess. I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We 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 uh, we 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 uh, decided to do Wicked City because Vance brought up that this might be the only anime movie that he's ever seen previously, and he saw it in his youth. Is that right, Vance? No, I, I mean, I've seen anime movies before, but this was one I saw when I was very young. How we, probably... young? How young are we talking, Vance? <laughs> well, this came out, I I couldn't have been more than 10. <laughs> oh, no. I, I feel like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, so this is... We had a... a illegal cable growing up so we got all the pay-per-view channels mm. and how illegal would... are we talking this is... <laughs> wait well well where you don't pay for cable yeah. sure, you get sure. all the channels <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh they uh at, after like eight o'clock or nine o'clock or at some point the pay-per-view channels always switched over to like spice channel or playboy or like to yeah. like skin and back type skin, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. and apparently this cartoon came on one of those pay-per-view channels late night and i just was watching this movie <laughs> so and... you'd normally be watching the porn at 10 oh but just instead... straight up just hardcore <laughs> no no i think uh, we might have uh, preferred if you were watching the porn <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i remembered re-watching this movie and i'd only seen it whenever i saw it when i was younger re-watching this movie i remembered so much of it that I did not think that I had still had in my brain. It imprinted like, on you. <laughs> like the spider twisting up, uh, the melting into the boobs. Yeah. Like, all of that <laughs> was still... Spoiler alert! <laughs> oh, <I'm... laughs> if you were going to turn off the podcast, they just now they, they're stuck in it. <laughs> um, um, did you feel watching it for a second time that it explained any emotional difficulties in your life <laughs> i i was telling joe like it's uh it's amazing that i'm as well adjusted as i am <laughs> having seen this at such a young age like, yeah dude i'm a semi-functioning adult <laughs> so. yeah. see after we did ninja scroll a buddy of mine texted me and was like hey do you remember watching that when we were kids and i completely forgot it and I was like, no, I don't remember. And then he started describing what happened and it totally jogged my memory. Apparently we were watching it at like one of his, you know, 10, 11 uh, birthday parties and it was a sleepover. And it was just like you were saying, it was like that this the pay-per-view channel had turned over and mm-hmm. they were playing Ninja Scroll. And uh, I was sleeping over at his house and everybody else was asleep except for me. And I was watching Ninja Scroll And apparently his grandmother woke up, saw what was happening, and just walked over and turned the TV off. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, that's not 
that's not shocking. Of course, this is the same director oh, yeah. as Ninja Scroll. Um, this precedes Ninja Scroll by a few years. This came out in 1987. The uh, director's name is Kawajiri Yoshiaki. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had another movie after this, right? Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust. Correct. We did the original Vampire Hunter D, but we haven't gotten around to Bloodlust yet. I worry about it now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, you know, kind of at the top of this, uh, that there's uh, a big sexual trauma trigger warning on this episode and this movie in general. Oh, yeah. Not for the faint of heart. Oh, let's not make it about the faint of heart or not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, this happens in a lot of live action movies, sadly enough, too, though. Yeah. Especially, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, we'll get into it. It's just, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, I don't think this is really a spoiler because it's came out in 1987, Get With The Times. But <laughs> um, this has a lot of non-consensual sex scenes. Yeah. A lot of sexual assault, a lot of rape, not fun to watch. <laughs> I feel like they almost did the the rape scenes the way they do fight scenes it's How like so? it's like the same number that mm. you might have of like significant fight scenes in a movie and they kind of ramp up in in terms of intensity as well yeah you know like you get to the final boss battle rape mm -hmm. god <laughs> That's so awful. It's really, really <laughs> awful. <laughs> that description was so terrible. <laughs> oh, God. The, uh, she's not wrong, though. No, she's not. It definitely, it definitely <laughs> levels up. Yeah. Quite, and, uh, quite a bit. It doesn't actually seem like it has a purpose at first. Like the I don't, I don't know it's if it like, ever gets really motivated. <laughs> I'm not sure. It, it doesn't get really motivated, but the end twist kind of plays a little into yeah. that. Yeah, but okay. before that, I was like, why is this happening at oh, all? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why is this yeah. happening? And why is it happening so often? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I feel like we should do a little bit of a non-spoiler synopsis. Yeah. A little non-spoiler synopsis. Do you want to do it? Do you want me to do it? I think I want you to do it. All right. So this is about a secret society of demons that have uh, signed a peace treaty with the human world. And uh, the demons agree not to attack the human world for as long as this peace treaty has been in, in, uh, in effect, which has been 500 years. But the peace treaty is about to be up. And the people from this, I believe it's called the Black World, uh, they're starting, the demons are starting to come up and attack the human world because some of them do not like this peace treaty. And uh, this is the story of a man who is a black guard, which is a secret police force. It's basically the men in black. Yeah, kind but of. But for demons instead of aliens. Yeah. And he is tasked with protecting the, uh, I guess, the guy that makes all of the peace treaties happen. Right, because yeah, he's to get supposed to be the intact. most important ambassador for the peace treaty. Yeah, conversation, and uh, that is basically the kind of short summary. Right, that's kind of everything that goes on without getting into the nitty gritty. And not to be a spoilery dickhead or anything, but there's not much else going on in the movie aside from that. <laughs> aside from all the events that take place in an order that create a narrative. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is strongly noir. Mm -hmm. It it kind of has um, an old Hollywood feel to it. There are moments where you see Taki, who's this main character, who is part of um, the Black Guard, and he literally looks like Cary Grant. And there's scenes where they're in an office, and there are blinds, and they're creating shadows. And I was like, can you get more like old love letter to noir? Oh yeah. Yeah, I definitely picked up on that. It's very noir, but like cyberpunk noir. Yeah, sort of. Although this film doesn't deal a lot with anxieties having to do with technology mm -hmm. or robotics or AI, which is really common in a lot of um, anime. But this film felt very Ghost in the Shell to me. 
in a few different ways. The animation style is way, way, way more primitive. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> the the cell count on this film is low. Uh, there's a lot of flashing. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If we need to have an epilepsy warning about this, movie <laughs> yeah, as well. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, epilepsy trigger warning as well. Yeah, I don't think that I am epileptic but watching it i was starting to feel a little woozy to be honest because it was just like flashing so hard and for so long at certain points i was just like mm -hmm. god you like trigger a migraine or something yeah it went pretty hard oh yeah i mean I, when i was thinking back on this i always thought he was wearing a, a trench coat like a like an old mm. the old like detective that's the way i picture in my head i didn't remember them in suits doing mm. their mission um and uh, Kat, you brought up Mich uh, Men in Black. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of a moment where he has a little gun and it kind of reacts like when he first gets that little gun in Men in Black and he yes. shoots. And it's so powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, and there's definitely some homages or stuff that I think other movies might have taken away and but that we'll get into, stuff like that. But, you know. I think that's a good uh, spoiler-free synopsis. What, what did you think about the animation, Vance? I like the animation. I thought it looked pretty. Like I'm a fan of 2D animation in mm. general, mm -hmm. um, which we don't see a lot of. Um, and I thought it, I thought it worked for what it was, and it looked really crisp for. Like I, I watched it streaming online, mm -hmm. and I thought it looked really good. Like they remastered it or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, we watched. We we had the Blu-ray copy of it, and. I know that the animation is primitive, but I thought that the way that they had like the the tones of the the colors mm. was really interesting. There are some points where it's just like everything is blue, and you only have the outlines of the characters and their color their uh, their clothes are colored in. And I just thought that it looked really unique and really stylistic. And some of the demons are very very creative, without uh, spoiling anything. Uh, <laughs> some of them are very creative very imaginative and uh, some I wish they were less creative and imaginative <laughs> <laughs> I wish they'd been imagined less yeah I wish they were a little less horrifying <laughs> um, but yeah I the, the one thing that I saw about this is you know there's it's difficult to find an anime that is a horror anime film and the person that I saw that like wrote an article about this said that this is about as close to a horror anime film that they've ever seen. It does get classified as, as horror in a couple of different places, which I was actually kind of surprised by. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it was kind of dark action noir mm -hmm. um, with some other things thrown in there. Um, but I wasn't thinking about it as a horror movie. And maybe mm. it's because horror movies usually really scare me. And I found this parts of this to be quite disturbing, but I was, I never wanted to leave the room. Yeah. I never felt never like there was a eyes or anything. Yeah. I didn't think there was a lot of suspense. And mm. I feel like, you know, for me, like I grew up on Hitchcock to me, you know, it's not horror unless there is a decent amount of suspense going on. Um, and, and this didn't hide much, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there's no moments where it's like, Oh, you're not going to see what's coming. It's like, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> Here's the horror in your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd agree with that more disturbing than horrifying. It does draw a lot on body horror. Yeah. Um, but I think that body horror can be used in all kinds of different genres. Yeah. Should we get into spoilers now or after do we have anything? Oh wait, how amped are you about the movie? How both of you guys, how amped are you? Um, I'm amped to have Vance back. <laughs> oh my god, I, I'm uh, if I had emotions, I'd be blushing right now. I'm sure, <laughs> uh, but there's some things about this film that I'm not super psyched to talk about. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, uh -oh. I'm, just, it's tough because I, I think the plot in this movie is not, uh, not very well formed. I think that the characters aren't well formed. I think that uh, the villains and their desires aren't well formed. Sure. There are some things I like, like we talked about the animation, but uh, yeah, the uh, the ant. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm amped that Vance is here as well, Vance. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we've been talking about girls on our podcast, so like I feel 
completely fine diving into this subject. <laughs> oh, <matter>. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> before we, we get to spoilers, can we get a plug in real quick? For Vance, we, we host a show called Boys Watching Girls where we both watch and review every episode of the Lena Dunham HBO series Girls. And, uh, and then there's some bonus episodes and stuff going on. And we're almost uh, finished wrapping up the entire series at this yeah. point. It, yeah, It's our first time watching it. We've never seen the show before. So, yeah. So give that a listen if you enjoy Vance and I's banter, if you just enjoy Vance, if you just enjoy me, which is a very small audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if, uh, yeah, I think there's some more horrifying episodes of girls at times than, <laughs> than most. There's some moments <laughs> that I can share. Yeah. There's some crossover moments uh, with this, you know. All right. Well, with that out of the way, let's get to spoiling Wicked City. Let's do it. They wouldn't spoil this, right? Oh, oh God. You can't spoil Spoilers. this. Spoiler right? talk. Spoiler, Spoiler talk. Spoiler talk. Anime movie podcast. Spoiler talk. So let's spoil Wicked City. What do you want to spoil first? What What should we dive into? Well, I mean, we could we could do this chronologically, um, or we could deal with some of the heavier topics up top and get out of the way. And then obviously get out of the way. I mean, give it its due, you know, justice and having a conversation about it, but mm -hmm. then move on into. Let's let our guest decide. Sure. Vance. Oh, I'm deciding this. is. Vance, was, do you want I'm... to talk about the story? Or you want to talk about heavy fucking topics? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, let's, I would love to start a little bit at the beginning, just with the double introductions that this movie does. Sure. Okay. With where it has a VO explaining, loosely explaining the black, black world. I guess it's called. Mm -hmm. Right. And then later, there he explains it again himself. Yeah, he he gives an introduction to the black world and like the conflict that's going on with it, and then he yeah. gives himself an introduction and how he fits into the black world and the black guard and everything. Yeah, I just felt like they'd explained it twice because that my version had like a over the city mm -hmm. voiceover type beginning. It oh, seemed like I don't... that's right. We we watch different versions, so oh, okay. there are some. I don't know if Vance got the totally explicit version that we got. No, I went theatrical. That's okay. the only one I was able to get. So we have the Blu-ray, which is the extreme explicit version where you said that there were some scenes that were taken out. Of yes, um, we can we can find out right now. So one of the first times this was distributed, um, <clears throat> one of the first times this was distributed for uh, English speaking audiences, um, there was a VHS in 1993 released in the UK by Manga Entertainment, and it was cut by one minute and 48 seconds. Um, I decided to read this list because this is on IMDb. I read this list before watching the movie for the first time. So I was horrified. <laughs> I didn't know what I was about to experience based, or I was afraid I was getting a picture of what I was about to experience based on what was cut out of this VHS. So it's four scenes. Starting with, all shots of Jin's hand forcibly touching Makie's vagina as well as the shot of her hair beginning to rise upwards to trap him. Number two, Makie being forcefully deep-throated by a tentacle and the first shot of the energy beams emerging from her breast. <laughs> Number three, most of Taki watching the visualization of Makie's gang rape in the, at the clinic, including two voiceovers, one from Mr. Shadow the other from my art, a.k.a. Giuseppe. And number four, Taki witnessing Make's rape at the dilapidated hideout and most of his ensuing conversation with Mr. Shadow. So all of those scenes were included in the Blu-ray version that we watched. And Kat gave me like a heads up, like, hey, this is the kind of shit that's in this movie. And uh, yeah, like they, they were apparently removed from a lot of the things. And when we were watching it and all of that stuff was happening, I like turned to her. I was like, I thought that this was removed. Like, how could this possibly be? A, like, it could have been more of this. Like, <laughs> it did say that the 2020 version had all of that put back in. Okay. Hooray. Yeah, I think I saw all of that. I don't know if it was extended further, but everything you described, I saw. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we're not we're not missing out yeah. on any kind of scenes because I was a little. Yeah. 
not necessarily worried, but yeah. I was like, I, I, I'm. We're gonna talk about these crazy ass scenes, <laughs> and then Vance is gonna be like, "What the fuck? What? what when did that happen?" <laughs> he's like, yeah, she's getting yeah. deep throat by the tentacle monster. <laughs> oh, Vance is like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? It was interesting about this, uh, and not watching a ton of anime, but having seen anime, it's when Giuseppe is that his character? Yeah, the yeah. short little uh, gremlin he, guy. He feels like he's out of an anime in a movie that's not an anime movie. Okay. You know, like his music comes up and he's kind of cartoonish. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm expecting him to go around, like start eating radishes and like just saying, like he feels like he's from a different movie when he first shows up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Except for being super molesty. (laughs) Um, Super molesty. The molesty level is real high. Like to the point, at that point, we haven't even really gotten into like, there's been a weird sex scene, but Taki was courting that girl for three months, he says. So he's not like an aggressive dater, even though he's a, a playboy, apparently. Yeah, he keeps being called uh, like a romantic or something. I guess yeah. he's he's been talking, uh, courting this, this girl for a while. And um, we see something untoward has happened because we see a spare hand laying on the floor. And you're like, uh, is somebody dead in there? I don't yeah. understand what's going on. And then this beautiful woman walks out and you're finding out this is the first time that he's going home with her. And uh, this is our, I would argue that this is the first rape scene. Okay. And it's Taki being raped? Yes. Okay. Because he Hmm. did not consent to having sex with the person he was having sex with. Yeah. That person was pretending to be somebody else. Yeah. So I think that that is still a, a breaking of consent. Um, yeah. And then he finds out that she's a uh, real spider-like um, oh, yeah. and has a toothed vagina mm-hmm. and nearly literally emasculates him. I don't know how he got out of that because yeah. he was like deep. He was fucking balls deep in her. And then she's got her legs. Ra- this Also, this is our introduction to this movie. Like this is one of the first yeah. scenes is like Taki, our main character, our hero, going home with this woman and everyone's like, oh, you're such a playboy. You're such a womanizer. You're a a, a woman maestro is what he is described as. Yeah. And then uh, he goes in. He opens the door to her apartment, goes into the bathroom, comes out, and she's in lingerie, and she's taking her bra off. And then she uh, she goes to go down on him, unzips his pants, and says... Oh, he's a healthy one. Oh God! Let me see if I can wake him up, and starts blowing him, and then oh, they're fucking, and then she turns into a spider lady, and he is balls deep in her, and then you see him like she like wraps her spider legs around him and is like trying to hold him in, and he's like, ah, oh, get off of me. She's doing that evil like mustache twirling thing while <laughs> wrapped around him, talking about her evil plan that's yeah. happened here. And then he somehow gets out of it before she can clamp her vagina claw mouth thing mm-hmm. off of his dick. Fantastic. There's so there's so much to unwrap with this whole sequence. <laughs> um, one because it leaves a lot of questions too, and it answers some questions. Like with you, Joe, when when you're like, how did he get away from it? Later, you find out he can jump super high and he's part of the black yeah. guard or whatever. So it's like, okay, he does have some and type of ability. She also says something about like, oh, never mind, it's okay, I got what I needed. Yeah. Yes, which kind of pays pays off a little at the end. Yeah. You know? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, Um. and another thing well one i like that he shows up at her place he's like oh wow your place is nicer than mine kudos like no no male jealousy of this woman having a better place than him yeah. uh he courted her for three months i don't know like that seems like a long courting for him to be such a playboy yeah. you know um so taki seems like a decent guy he's even shocked when she's in lingerie like he's like this wasn't what i expected like yeah, he was kind of like, oh, she was such a good girl. I didn't know that she had yeah. this like super sexual exterior, like interior thing yeah. going on. Yeah, he doesn't have like this womanizing quality about him that it seems like they're not introducing him as as that, even yeah. though they say it. I mean, I don't, 
I'm not even sure I remember them saying womanizer. I remember them no. calling him a romantic no, no, they never like yeah. six different times. I think they're kind of accusing him of being girl crazy. They never yeah. accuse they never call him a, a womanizer. They no, do no. call him a woman maestro. So like, I guess like he has he a way plays with the them like the violin. <laughs> <laughs> like he's not a fuck boy, but he is like a gentleman playboy. Mm. And there's a difference. Like, Is it, I like mean, George, are you talking about like James Bond? I'm th- yeah, like James Bond, like George Clooney type thing. That's what I'm thinking for Taki instead mm. of like, hey, you up? You know, like he's he's ta- <laughs> he's treating the ladies right, but he's just banging a lot of them. Apparently, I don't. Oh, they didn't I, make it sound like he's banging a lot of them either. I yeah, that's why I did. That was the contrast. He's like this woman maestro, but like he's not. He's been like trying to date this one girl for the longest time. <laughs> You're like, you he's know? not like, doing well with this. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't even got um, an invitation back to replace. We don't months. know his past. <laughs> um, the, another thing that really that they set up on this is the woman. He asked, "What did you do with the um, other woman's body?" You know, because she's obviously pretending to be some other woman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's implied that these black. Uh, what what are they called? What are the black world side? demons? Yeah, the black world demons don't look like humans, and so they have to f- take somebody else's form Just to look like, like Men people. in Black. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like Men yeah. in Black. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna say invasion but, of the body snatchers and whatever. Yeah, but we don't understand what the actual form of Tokie is. Takie. Makie. Like Makie. Makie. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Makie. Like what is her original form and whose body is she in or like what is that yeah like we get the impression that you know somebody's like hey nice skin suit yeah (laughs) you found a good one um but and i'd love to come back to this i want to backtrack just for a second about something you said earlier vance um because i just think that so much of this is about male fantasy Um, And, you know, a lot of movies are, I guess. But in particular, you know, this main character is like, I have this boring job, but really, it's a cool job. (laughs) You know, (laughs) which I think like so many dudes would love to be able to say. And then he's like, I'm a gentleman and people should respect me, but also the ladies love it. You know, (laughs) I just feel like it's just a list of of something or just a guy just went like things I want (laughs) as a man. Lady. Yeah, I mean, if. If you think about like the movie The Big Sleep with Humphrey Bogart, like if you watch that movie, like every woman that passes him looks down at his crotch oh, in that for movie. Sure. Yeah. Like and it's just like there's so many references to how hung Taki is in this movie. Like yeah. everyone mentions it. <laughs> uh, even Giuseppe for some reason who <laughs> should not know about it. But no. yes, he does. No. Well, I mean he um, does apparently have yeah. a healthy one. Apparently it's um, healthy, yeah. yeah. According <laughs> um, to Spider Lady, or... I'd feel awful for anyone who had a real sick one. But <laughs> yeah. ooh, you hate to see that. <laughs> but oh. let's let's make our way back up to to Maki, so I don't cut you off from what you were you were saying about oh. um, her skin suit. Well, that's well. This is what transitions us into the, the multiple uh, sexual assault scenes. Is that when they do that, they do that with her in the sex in her her human suit you know mm-hmm. what i mean yeah like, so which she... i'm like why is she st- i get why she's still like that for the audience but they wouldn't yeah you know? i mean so make is part of the black world she is a a demon but she's also part of the black guard and it seems like yeah. this is kind of an unusual situation and she becomes the new partner of taki um and she is well known in the black world as being a traitor. Um, And so it's kind of like she's donned the skin suit and she never takes it off because this is who she's decided to be. She's decided to live in the human world and live a human life. So I think that's kind of part of it where they're like, you're not showing your real self. And she's like, no, this is who I am now. Uh, This is, I I identify as a human. (laughs) (laughs) Fair, Fair enough. Uh, I wish they would have dove more into uh, the Black World Demons more. I felt like there was a lot of world building that if they just sort of tackled a little more, 
yes it would have been a really solid movie like i didn't understand why this treaty was a thing like yeah. why like why do they even want like you know like i wanted them to go to the a, meeting yeah and it's kind of a misdirection as far mm-hmm. as this movie is concerned um, and we're in the spoiler section, which we've decided means we can spoil literally anything. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just enter a gate and and everything's spoiled there. Um, but it, are you are you comfortable with a Ghost in the Shell spoiler? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so at the end of Ghost in the Shell, you find out that there is a new kind of being that is put into an existence where um, these digital AI creations have actually spawned um, something new in the world. And the idea is it's a very scary ending of this new being going out into the world and you don't know what they're going to do or where they're going to go. And, you know, they ain't got no strings. Yeah. Um, what the intentions of it are. Yeah. And and so the end of this this movie is so much about creating this this new half demon, half human being um and that and that's with the treaty that that's kind of like the, yeah i AKA think that treaty yeah i think that's what the misdirect is there's no like paper treaty it's that they're trying to com- combine both worlds through the spawn of uh taki and makie because they've been genetically engineered or they're like the highest uh caliber of human and demon. real good quality human <laughs> yeah and usually it's not possible for humans and black world demons to procreate but for some reason both of them can and so that is what's going to bring peace for 500 years apparently but i i mean does that mean that this happened another time 500 years ago i think that's what giuseppe is mm-hmm. supposed to be right am i wrong oh i didn't know i didn't realize yeah i i feel like this is where the movie falls apart but isn't he 200 <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this definitely, I, I feel like this is where the movie falls apart. And yeah, he might be 200, but he also has like electrical powers. Yeah, I get I get where you're coming from on that one. I I do think it was a misdirection for the sake of misdirection. <laughs> I think it's literally, it, yeah. it's, it's just a red herring. And, and Vance, you're totally right. It completely falls apart um, in so many ways because this is probably a conversation you could have with the people yeah. of the black guard hey, you, guys, and well, just... you just fuck <laughs> they're like yeah. talkies talkies like oh uh, hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is like the easiest i've ever had <laughs> i've been courting this chick for three months you just want me to fuck this yeah sure. <laughs> like he would die for the black guard he would die for them he'd give his life and, and you, you don't think he'd you know yeah. have a little easiest rumpy ass- pumpy easiest assignment ever fuck just fuck his hot chick <laughs> uh, sign me up <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the stuff they got me is in the middle of the movie. They're like, "You love her. You're gonna go rescue her because you love her." I'm like, "It's been two hours." Yes, like, <laughs> yes, like, dude. I wrote like, that down. I was like, "He loves her for some reason." <laughs> like, I could get like, "Hey, I don't want to see this happen to this lady that saved my life, and she's my partner, and I don't want this bad thing to happen to her." Yeah. But not like the only reason I'm doing it is because I love her. I it think just. That... Yeah, I mean, unlike some animes we've seen where people suddenly go like, no, I don't, I hate you, when, when somebody accuses them of loving someone else immediately after meeting them, um, he was kind of like, mm, yeah. I mean, he doesn't really react to it. And then when there is kind of an exchange of feelings, he's like, yeah, I don't know if I can actually say that I love you. Yeah. And I was like, this is so realistic. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's so many things about this film that are so unrealistic. But this part, this part I'm buying. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird i mean at that point they've just been brought back to life so yeah you know he's got a lot on his mind <laughs> not real. like i don't understand he's like maybe i could like what i also love I have so many questions i also love to your point vance that it's like everybody through this vision that's happening everybody can see makia getting raped like gang raped and Taki's like, this is wrong. I'm going to go save her. And they're like, you must be in love. <laughs> Taki and Maki sitting in. And just like, dude. Yeah. Like, is every person that's a hero in love with their, their uh, I don't know, damsel, uh, for lack of a better term. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is when that, that 
that's referencing when Make is taken sort of back to the demon lair when she um, gets ensnared and he kind of leaves her for dead, but she tells him like, go, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I got this. Don't worry about it. I'm just being mouth raped by tentacles, but you go ahead. Um, And so he's not really sure what's happened to her, but then we find out through these visions that everyone can see is that she's being gang raped by demons to teach her a lesson for being a traitor. Yeah. And I don't understand Giuseppe's. Giuseppe tries to talk him out of leaving him to go save her. Yeah. And I don't get why. Well, I don't get why either because the whole plan is to have them two get together. And when he's up on the world, he's like, don't leave me. Fuck her. She sucks. Like, you're supposed to protect me. But the whole <laughs> yeah. plan is to get them two to bone. Yeah. And also, you need to save her. Yeah. And like sending him by himself. I also didn't understand. Well, I, it makes sense at the end, but I was really confused why this guy uh, who, like, they're supposed to protect Giuseppe and they send two people for the whole thing. Like, you don't send an <laughs> army to protect them. Like, he's flying coach on an airplane. Like, he's booking his own travel. Like, this guy has the world peace in his hands and they're like all right we're gonna send this guy with the gun and uh girl he never met go and he just (laughs) wanders out of a window oh dude he's the worst he is the worst he's the absolute worst and again he's the worst just for the sake of being the worst like yeah like it doesn't make sense that he escaped when she's first being uh oh we got to go to the scene where she's uh assaulted by her ex-boyfriend yeah at the hotel yeah uh they go to some hotel that has some power source around it and Taki's best friend works there. Mm-hmm. And he has a fake arm for some reason. <laughs> we find out later. Uh, I thought that was pretty yeah. badass. That guy was pretty badass for the four seconds that he was on screen. <laughs> and we know they're cool because they play chess and mm-hmm. talk. Ate sandwiches <laughs> together. Yeah. Like finger sandwiches, you know, cucumber <laughs> yeah. ones. While Giuseppe's up there threatening to go to a, a brothel. Yeah. Or, and then groping or Maki. Maki. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess one demon, Jen, manages to break through somehow. Mm-hmm. And they kind of write themselves in a weird corner where they say, Oh, how was Maki able to be here? And they're like, Oh, we trained her so that she could <laughs> withstand this. And I'm like, If that training exists, I feel like that could leak out. <laughs> like, <laughs> instead. <laughs> Like, you think they were thinking about this when they wrote it? You think they think a lot of no, I, I thought they were like, okay, we have to explain how she's able to be here. Yeah, I mean, but we don't have to. We don't have to figure out how no one else would learn that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and they don't ever explain how Jin is able to do it, right? No. Yeah. No. They just nope, kind of say just... he broke through. Yeah. And this is the first non-consensual sex scene where I feel like she sounds too much like she's okay with what's happening. And now I don't mean to victim blame an animated character here, (laughs) but I think I was, it was just telling Joe right afterwards. I was like, it would be horrifying, absolutely horrifying if she was screaming or pleading or doing any of the things that might happen in some of these situations. Um, So in some ways it's, kind of a blessing because you're like okay i don't have to get (laughs) re-traumatized yeah from any like sexual thing that's ever happened to me based on on watching this but also she is just sounds like she's moaning to me i mean she sounds like she's having an off day not like (laughs) i think go ahead vance yeah well yeah it it, i i I get your point guy because it seems like at one point he's got her, both hands tied down with one hand and yeah. the other hand in her underwear. And you're just like, oh, you could probably try to do something. Yeah. And she's here. such Since a badass. You, yeah. She's a fighter. And I guess she is luring him in so that she yeah. can do the yeah. hair thing. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And that's what I thought yeah. after watching that scene. But then it happens again for like the gang rape. 
Yeah, and she also has all of these different powers that she gains and loses. Like, she only uses the hair thing that one time on Jin. It's like, dude, that's a very useful power. You should use that more often. The rest of the time, she's just, like, growing a French manicure really nicely. <laughs> yeah. Really long French manicure, yeah. And then, like, she, it, it. I don't know if it's, like, she can cut people with it, like, with a karate chop. And then the hair thing was really cool. And I, I thought, like she was luring him in after after watching i was like well this chick is such a badass and so powerful and like why doesn't she just beat the fuck out of this guy yeah and <clears throat> but then she does the hair thing and i was like oh okay i guess that was luring him in but why uh, not to victim blame him an animated character as well but like why would you put yourself through that and not just do that yeah and i, I don't think it makes a lot of sense and i i feel like there's a really uncomfortable sort of narrative with her character where she starts out really badass and cool mm -hmm. and doesn't have a lot of qualities that you would consider to be really typically feminine. She's not particularly nurturing or compassionate. Um, you know, she she's kind of dude-like. And um, then as the story goes on, she gets more frail. Mm. She stops fighting as much. She's making kind of no attempts. She's just kind of giving up. And then at the end, she's like a blushing bride. She's literally wearing a sheet that looks like a wedding dress yeah. inside <laughs> of a church, finally having had consensual sex and and saying her feelings and, <laughs> you know, being very like ladylike. Yeah. And and then it's like the first time she's not getting raped. And it's this message that's like, if you try to be too powerful as a woman, if, if you try to take on these masculine qualities, if you threaten the egos of men, then you are going to get raped. We will weaponize our bodies against you to show you your place. And then once you start to get it and you start to be a woman again and do these, um, you know, these typical like this is your place in society as a woman you're going to birth a child you're going to marry a man you're going to do all these things now you will be treated well and it's like you're not being punished anymore yeah and that bugged me well, i don't i mean i could definitely see how you could see that from what happened in it i don't think they were going for for that specific just because what got me was when Jen breaks in, we're thinking, oh, he's going after the old man. And he doesn't. Mm. Yeah. And he stays with her. And I'm just like, wait, why is he doing this? And it all pays off at the end because he's trying to stop her from being with that guy. That's their real mission. They don't care about the old guy. But we don't know that yet. Yeah. But that's the first clue that you have that it's not about the old guy. Because he had a chance right there to kill the old man and he didn't even look for him but you, you could know? kind of you could kind of have the same effect if he went in and was like listen i know the way things ended between us were you know it was a little rough <laughs> how about i buy you dinner <laughs> you know well i mean he thought he could just win her over with the, with his love making that was his that was his uh his thing but I, at that point in the movie i was wa watching it wondering why is he doing this I was yeah. just like, why is he doing this at this point? Because I think, oh, get the old guy, stop the treaty. I'm still thinking about the plot as they set it up. Um, and then this happens for a long time. And <laughs> yeah. 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 I was slightly surprised that taking out all those really explicit scenes only removed one minute and 48 seconds. Yeah, it from this. seemed like for fucking ever. It felt like <laughs> it was so long. <laughs> Yeah, those were definitely in it when I was watching, when I first watched this. Okay. No. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, um... I do want to say, I do want to say, I at the end of the last podcast we did, I, I was like, oh, there's this movie I saw a long time ago. I could never figure out the name of it. And Cat, in like five seconds, was like, Wicked City. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, I had never remembered the name of this movie or anything. My cat knew it. Oh, oh, tentacle deep throating? Wicked City. Let's yeah, watch it. Yeah. You're on for the next one, Vance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would just like to say this is not my suggestion to do this movie. 
I just wanted to know what the name of it was so I could look it up. <laughs> so Maki, um hair attacks. Hair attacks Jin, Jin yes. Um, and then how does Jin reach his demise? There's a there's more fighting that goes on, and I'm I'm already blind. Uh, uh, this is when uh, Taki gets up. Yeah. Uh, we find out that his friend has a fake arm because that arm was ripped <laughs> off during a screaming attack. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, Ta- I hate Taki those. gets Taki gets blown into walls a lot. Oh, like yeah. he gets yeah. like shot back into a wall and He's stuck in it. He's embedded in walls <laughs> yeah. like several yeah. times. But I feel like that's kind yeah. of a Japanese fighting anime trope. Like how many mm-hmm. times does somebody in Dragon Ball Z get thrown into a wall? I mean, he's in rough shape. He's got to have at least some broken ribs. At least yeah. some broken ribs. He definitely gets thrown into walls. The walls are like crumbling around him. Yeah. Definitely some broken ribs at least. Yeah, he has some powers, but we're not sure what he could jump high and withstand. And like his hit. gun's really good. I yeah, guess. he's got like yeah. a dark, uh, a black world anti gun, and that's how Jin meets his demise because Ta- Makie has him trapped in the hair, and then that's just when Taki bursts in. He's like pew pew, shoots his ass. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Deus Ex Machina stuff. Yeah, Dude. throughout this whole movie. Yeah, this film is Men in Black with some Ghost in the Shell, and then Deus Ex Machina and exposition, and then film noir. Yeah, <laughs> and you get this movie. Oh yeah, and then rape, and then you get this movie. Oh, yeah, can't forget. Uh, and uh, rape. Refer- references to the references to the thing also when the head comes off of a body oh. and starts crawling on the ground. Mm-hmm. So, so then Taki goes up to Maki and is like are you okay? Can I help you put your shirt back on? You know? And uh, then they go to find Giuseppe and Giuseppe has escaped through the window and they're like, no, oh, he must have gone to a whorehouse, the dirty old man. Yeah. The lecherous fool. And this is the scene that Vance vividly remembered from his childhood hmm. after yeah. talking with him for a little bit before we started recording. Vance, walk us through it. Oh, man, do I have to? <laughs> this, this is like... Uh, it's when he goes to the the brothel. He's getting a massage uh, from this busty blonde. I guess she is, uh, or what was she? I, she I don't like know. Like, red-haired lady. Let's, or brown. let's okay. settle for strawberry blonde. Yeah. Okay. Strawberry blonde. Yeah. So there's talk about how how healthy he is as well <laughs> when she's massaging <laughs> so, him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, he starts. It was the part where he starts. <laughs> Jeez. He starts sucking on her breast, and she says the line of like, "There's no milk coming out of there because I'm not pregnant or something." And yeah, it that for me stuck with me for a long time. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, "What is happening?" <laughs> like this is that is the most disturbing. And then something comes out. Yeah, he says, "I swallowed something." Yeah, and that's when you get the. Uh get the impression that the jig is up. Something's yeah. up with this hooker lady. Kawajiri has something about just putting a whole boob in the mouth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that okay. that happens in Ninja Scroll as well, Vance. There's a, a villain who is, uh, who is raping a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy, his hallmark. Honestly. Uh, but this, guy, this huge rock monster is raping a, a lady ninja... And he just sucks her entire boob into his mouth. And uh, and then in this scene, Giuseppe is like sucking. And it's not a small boob. No. It is a pretty, pretty health. She's rather healthy as well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those and boobs aren't starving. Full, <laughs> and they're going full sound effects. Suction cup sound effects. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. plunger, plunger on the wall sound effects. <laughs> and Giuseppe's mouth is some kind of like Mary Poppins bag. Because like it's there's no way it's it's big enough to hold all of this boob, but it does. Yeah, he unhinges it. He's like a yeah, fucking like a anaconda. <laughs> and her just casual reaction to him doing it is just yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> once it's revealed that uh, it's not milk that's coming out of them boobs, but something else, that's when Giuseppe starts to melt into her body. It starts to swallow him through just devouring him into her breasts. 
mm-hmm. which was some body yeah. horror shit going on. That was some body horror. Yeah. Now, would you consider this a rape slash sexual assault on Giuseppe? Interesting. No. Yeah, I, I'd be tempted, except that he's such a lecherous asshole who's just constantly molesting anything and anyone. Eh. If, if, if he had asked, are you a black demon world person? And she said no, and then she turned out to be that maybe. But also, yeah, but Taki he, the whole movie, the, the whole, the whole movie, the whole movie, he's been saying, "Oh, I would love to sleep with one of them. It's supposed to be the best sex ever." Yeah. And he is seemingly having the time of his life before he wax figurine melts into her <laughs> chest. <laughs> See, I'm gonna, so. I'm gonna go against the grain here. I am going to say that this is a rape because it's similar to what Taki goes through in the beginning of the movie. Like he didn't sign up for this. Well, but he he openly said that he would sign up for it. I think that I think... It, it there there ends up being um, an assault during a sexual act. Um, but I also think if she had been up front with him at the beginning and been like, "By the way, I am a black world demon," I think he'd be like, "Let's do this," <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think to Kat's point, in the beginning, Taki's sleeping with. A different person than he thinks he's sleeping with. Very, yeah. Um, it's, it's like a, a revenge of the nerd type of um, yeah. situation where you pretend like in the dark that you're the captain of the football team instead. Yes. Like that's one of those like that's not cool. This one, if she didn't melt him into his body and they just had sex, then she let him leave. That's fine. Like the Giuseppe thing. Like that's what he wanted. He didn't. All right. Yeah, yeah, even even if that first one, first scene with with Taki and Spider Girl, if even if it hadn't gotten violent and she just walked away, it would still be fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's been our segment. Is this rape? <laughs> oh, <God>. oh no. <laughs> Jesus. The classic amp segment. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, really, that was a pretty good joke. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and they're like, is Vance coming back for a third episode? <laughs> and this is the movie that you picked out for us to watch, Vance. I didn't pick it out. I didn't pick it out. I just asked the question because you guys are anime people. And I figured somebody would know it. I, I seem to recall... Hey, if you guys want to do this one, I really want to do it. <laughs> I just enjoyed the podcast last time. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys about any anime movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you follow this up after Girl Up Through Time is nice and simple. Yeah. And then this, I don't know what the third one would be. Welcome to the depths, Vance. Yeah. <laughs> um, so somehow Taki and Maki are able to immediately find exactly the brothel and exactly the room that Giuseppe is melting into the demon woman's body and she's um, absorbing him. Um, and then they start pulling him out. And then, uh, of course, Maki brings out her nails, her yeah. French manicure that's been out well, mm-hmm. in, I guess, for a while, brings it back out, um, holds it right up to this demon's neck, um, as talking just prize <laughs> prize Giuseppe out of this woman's melting body. Yeah. It's a good scene. <laughs> I mean, that part of it is cool. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting and innovative. 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 Uh and then that demon dies. Yeah. Good for her. That's what you get from messing with my boy Giuseppe. So then they need to find a place that has even more of a psychic barrier because the psychic barrier that was protecting them from the demons at the hotel wasn't good enough. But there's a better one at a clinic. Yeah. Yeah, because they have to take it, take uh, Giuseppe to a hospital because he's got a parasite in him and he goes into some kind of like shock. Uh, and that's when uh, we start to get into some kind of like as they're driving to get to that hospital where it looks like Giuseppe is going to be uh, healed in a back to tank like from Star Wars, uh, they, they're they driving to it. And this is when we get into the demon time trap, black world time trap. I'm not exactly sure what this was. 
It reminded me of some scenes from Fate, the Fate series, and also from Magica Modica. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that this was supposed to be them traveling into the black world. They're not supposed to. I, like They're on their way to get to this clinic, and the demons are creating this world the, yeah, the that time separates trap, right? them yeah, from everything else. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up. And then this is when the uh, parasite shoots out of Giuseppe and goes into Machia, and this is when she starts to explode from the inside, and then the tentacle monster deep throats her, which was very graphic. That was awful. And this got me thinking, and actually I called my sister, who is currently doing a, a PhD and has studied a lot of things about Japanese culture. And so I called her today and uh, first of all, she was like, is everything okay? Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> tend to call her in the middle of the day. She's like, who died? And I was like, Tierney, oh, what's, what's with the tentacle thing with, with the Japanese and the tentacles? What's going on? Um, and she was telling me that actually there's a lot of art that gets very tentacly and erotic from a few different cultures, especially seafaring ones, shockingly, you know, which, which makes me think that you get sailors out on, on the ocean and they're bored and they, they don't have uh, women to please them. And then they start thinking about how tentacles are like dicks and what they would do with those. Yeah, they start being like, yo, look, there's eight of us on this boat. Say we drop an <laughs> octopus in the middle of us all. <laughs> Circle jerk. Nobody has to be. <laughs> we just got this octopus. Bukake. <laughs> yeah. And that's how Bukake was formed. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, and I mean, more you think famous. about mermaids. Yeah, mermaids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just people in the sea. Yeah. Um, um, it's then, it, this. The tentacle stuff here was the second memory that I <laughs> that was stuck with me. Like that close up is aggressive. Yeah. It's really aggressive. I, I just want to say I also love the image of you calling your sister and she'd be like, hey, you don't really call very often. Is everything okay? Is, is mom and dad all right? Is grandma cool? And you're like, yeah, yeah, they're all fine. What's up with tentacles raping people in anime all the time? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you know, just call me next time there's a funeral. Like, I don't need to hear about this. Just like, this is how you lose your relationship with your sister. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and there was, she was telling me about the dream of the fisherman's wife which is very old piece of artwork from the Edo period that has a woman engaging in a, what's assumed to be consensual uh, kind of lingus with uh, two octopi. Yeah, um, and there's, there's a lot of like... Send you know, that picture over to me. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of tentacle action there. Um, and apparently there were, you know, after, after World War II, there were a lot of sanctions on... Um, you know, what was appropriate and what wasn't appropriate and what was illegal in terms of um, sexual content and things. Um, and I was reading somewhere that in the 80s, people started going, oh, you can show a much more aggressive and explicit scene with a tentacle instead of using a penis because it's like, oh, it's just a part of a monster. This is something a monster might do. So it was a way to actually kind of get around censorship that's horrifying it is horrifying the implications of that are so horrifying yeah it, yeah limitations are good for art at times because you have to figure out a way to get around it and this is <laughs> one of those ones where it have... made it worse yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't yeah. have tried to get around this one yeah yeah some lines uh, don't need to be crossed no. you know we exactly. were thinking we were exactly. thinking we we're so preoccupied whether or not we could <laughs> we didn't stop to think whether or not we should because when you think about it, while a lot of these scenes are obviously incredibly explicit, there isn't a lot of penis in vagina. That's true. Actual, you know, you don't see that. You see, you know, you know, fingertips touching a vulva. You see a woman's whole entire torso becoming a massive vagina and a you man know, being sucked into it. But you don't really get the there penetration. Is, there is no human sexual it's always between a, a, a human and a black world person um i guess it's black world on black world technically for the gang rape although she's wearing her human suit yeah i do have to say the tentacle thing though very disturbing very imaginative <laughs> and it was dr like for what it was trying to accomplish it did it was 
animated crazily. And I do think that that was the most disturbing of all the scenes. Really, of that one the, was of all Whoa. the the sex scenes that were non consensual. Yeah, okay. I felt like the next the next one is the worst. Yeah, that's what I was just because it has more of a real world yeah uh, tacitness to it. Um, mm. the 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 issue with this uh, thing that comes out. I was like, oh, she's going to stop it and she's going to cut it before it gets into her body or he's going to shoot it. Like, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> you didn't when this think is of happening. like option C, just let it happen? Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, check it out. No. Where's this going to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what he kind of does later. He's very nonchalant when he gets to that uh, warehouse. Yeah. Like, there's no urgency to stop what's happening. Yeah, when he gets to the warehouse, and this this is a scene where Machia is being gang raped by like three or four people at once. He's just Taki's just kind of chilling up against the wall, like like a spectator, like, oh, what's going on over there? He's just reading the room, you know, yeah. just <laughs> getting a feel for the party. Yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, yeah, are you guys almost done wrapping this up? Oh, all right. God. That's like, the gang rape part of the party. All right, where's the uh, where's the punch? I think this this scene was disturbing, obviously, because of the number of players in it and also because of the fact they literally said, like, this is her punishment. This is what she gets for being a traitor. And all the implications mm -hmm. of that are really horrifying. But again, it was that thing where the the voice acting in this, it wasn't screaming. It wasn't pleading. It wasn't all of these things that would be emotionally devastating to to watch and to witness. Instead, it was like kind of mild moaning, like mm. somebody who wasn't super into it, but not that not into it. Could it possibly be that she's just so defeated and worn out and it's been happening for so long that, that it's just like just yeah happening now? Totally possible, yeah, but... Yeah, it could be dark world people just are like that. Like, you know, it's sure. impossible to... That's what I'm saying. Like the movie has a way to like show us more. Like I wanted to see dark world people interacting with uh, humans and just see like, oh, so what was the piece like? Because we never see what the piece actually looked like. Yeah. I, like, we also don't really see yeah. anything of the black world. That's like I, yeah. I wrote down like when they get to that place. So what hap what what causes Taki to go to this abandoned warehouse is he sees a vision of her being gang raped. And that's when he decides to leave his post protecting Giuseppe. And he mm -hmm. goes to save Machia because she was the realest partner he's ever had or whatever. <laughs> um, Sorry. She was the realest. She was the realest. You're the real MVP, Machia. Let me be real with you. I saw you getting fucking <laughs> tentacle deep throated. That was shit. That was wild. That was real. So then he drives over to the abandoned warehouse and I was like, is the abandoned warehouse the black world? Like, that's pretty shitty. Like, I wish we would have seen him like have to go into the depths of this black world as, as opposed to just like some warehouse in Japan. Sure. I mean, in Men in Black, we never see the alien worlds. Yeah, but you would have to take a spaceship to get to that alien world. Sure. Like the the black world obviously is it, like all of these players are coming in and out of the black world to come into the human world. So it's yeah. like if it's that easy for them to travel, like why can't he go in to the depths? You know what I mean? And in Men in Black, you have you get to see Will Smith, who's new, interact with all the aliens at Men in Black headquarters. They go around and interview other. Um, aliens you know so all right vance it's a better movie okay i'll give you that. <laughs> I, I, i'm just saying this it's there you know no, what no, made it's, this it's a much better movie you know, <laughs> yeah i'm just saying we, we just want to see some interaction with the dark world people like yeah. how did they agree like uh, let's have the meeting where they agree that she's going to work with them I wish. You know, or be partners. Or, or like something. have a flashback to um, her making making the change and deciding to don the, the human suit or whatever. This really reminded me again of Ninja Scroll because it's like having the eight devils of Kamon. Because mm -hmm. I guess you, the idea is that we're not seeing the dark world people. We're seeing a group of sort of vigilantes who are against the peacekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, and they're kind of hiding out in... Um, human world to to try to achieve their goal to uh to avoid and why the is she why has she been dating everybody that seems to attack her 
you know like she had been like both people are her boyfriend her ex her exes yeah her ex lovers yeah yeah the the gang rape is more obscured and it's more yeah. implied you don't directly see it and with the tentacle you do which could possibly be about that you know the rating censorship. thing the censorship thing but what i found found most disturbing about the tentacle thing is like you can see the tentacle like pulsing and pushing through her yeah. throat which is like very it's intense. so explicitly detailed in this really visceral way that yeah it is that's yeah. like the most intense part about that that i you just see it like going in and out down the throat and i was just like oh man because i think i think when we got to the the gang rape st stuff i was like oh no and i was just like why yeah but when we were at <laughs> we were at the tentacle thing i was just like oh oh go oh, god <laughs> see because this is the part where i was like because this is the scene that you actually like texted me about before we started watching you were yeah. like yeah apparently like they took out this part with the uh, the deep throat and i was like oh man that sounds crazy and then we're watching the movie and then that deep throat thing is happening it's happening for a while yeah and i was like I thought that they took this out. Like, was there more <laughs> to this? <laughs> I was like, how much more could this possibly have been? <laughs> oh, man. Um, so Taki goes to the abandoned warehouse where Makie is being gang raped and everything. And he's going there to save her. But he's taking his, he's taking his very leisurely, <laughs> very leisurely to save this woman who's chained up and getting raped by like three or four demon world people. And he's just kind of like chilling on the side of the thing. He maybe have like probably looked like he was about to smoke a cigarette. Like, oh, what's up? Uh, what's up? Like he just walked into a sex club or yeah. something. Yeah. But this is where he is confronted by a demon world temptress woman who has a vagina torso, right? It would appear mm -hmm. that way. And he gets swallowed into her. Kind of like how Giuseppe was swallowed into... Uh, the boob lady, uh, he gets swallowed in by the vagina well, lady. Yeah, just only a massive vagina. Yeah. This is like getting around censorship where you can't do a close-up of an actual vagina. So he just made the vagina go from the bottom of somebody's neck down to their crotch hmm. to fake a close-up so you could just get right in there. <sighs> guess so. like are these demons just like about sex do they are they the only ones that run these brothels like i don't know any like that's the only <laughs> thing they seem to be yeah. focused on it would be interesting if, if there was a bit more depth there yeah that's so, all so i want to play our favorite game again here is this rape with taki and the temptress lady who has a vagina chest no i mean because she, it seems like she has some kind of charm spell on him and she's mesmerized him. And that's when you, we, we get a, a very intense flashing and he's just like staring at her, turning into a vagina and he can't move. How does he get out of that situation? He, he shoots her. I, I, From the I remember, inside, right? He, he kind of like shakes yeah. off the days that he has. Okay. Yeah. I remember that visual of him like shooting. And he, this is another moment where he gets blasted back <laughs> into the- Is that sexual assault? I'm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> we're not going back in. <laughs> no. I don't want my name attached to this. <laughs> <laughs> like to remind you that you wanted this. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. yeah, the way that he escapes the vagina woman is he, sh he shoots her. I have that written down. And uh, then next, he punches through a guy's face. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, This is when uh, a big bad guy, who I thought was the big bad guy at first, the guy in the pinstripe suit, he shows up. I think his name is like Mr. Shadow. Yeah. Um, I, I don't remember hearing that in the movie, but looking at the cast list on IMDb and Wikipedia, apparently there's somebody named Mr. Shadow. I don't know if it's him, but the dude in the pinstripe suit, uh, I literally wrote down, we never got a story about him or his motives. <laughs> don't know the bad guy motives at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like they just want to fucking rape people. And then the, the, the big, the big, uh, the pinstripe suit guy turns into a rock monster and Taki shoots him and that's the end of him. Yeah. But then he regenerates. <laughs> so he walks off with with Maki. He thinks that she's been saved. They're all good now. Um, they get fired. This bothered me because he doesn't fight it at all. He's not like, let me explain something. Or, you know, there's just nothing. They He just like sits there and takes it. And then they walk away like, you're right. We should be fired. 
<laughs> I, I, my takeaway with this is that it's such a Japanese culture versus American culture. Oh, maybe. Because we've, because we've seen this scene a million times where like, oh, you guys are reckless. You're fired. And then they go on and like solve the case at the end and they yeah. give a big fight and they slam their badge and gun on the table and they yell back. And I was like, yeah, Japanese culture, they just bow. And they're like, well, <laughs> we accept it. Like we accepted it. You, know? you can't fire me. I quit. Yeah. yeah. This is all corrupt. <laughs> But yeah, in Japan, they're just like, oh, man, I just lost my job. How am I going to pay <laughs> And it has, a mortgage? And it has one of the best lines ever by the, his uh, boss. It's like, you have one fatal flaw. You, you're romantic. Yeah, you're too romantic. <laughs> I was like, what? I was yeah, like, I think I even fatal? wrote that down because I was just like, are I was you like, kidding me? How is that his fatal flaw? Like, <laughs> you have one fatal flaw. You're so handsome. <laughs> yeah. You're handsome and ladies like you. Hey, your partner's going to be this really hot woman from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to fuck her. I also, I want to say, I, this is, this is a complete non sequitur. I love their backstories. I love Taki's undercover, his cover career mm -hmm. is just like an electric, uh, like, it's like a lamp salesman or some shit. And he's like, yeah, this is my day job. But by night, I'm a member of the Black Guard, an elite fighting force <laughs> to keep the black world from attacking the human world. Mm -hmm. And then we get to Machie's cover and she's like, I'm a fucking famous model. I'm super beautiful. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that I could do that. <laughs> like, just I'm a fucking lamp salesman or whatever. <laughs> like, she's a model without a sponsor right and like because she doesn't have a sponsor she doesn't get booked because none of the girls like her so she's like a failing model so that's her. like at that point you might as well just like not even have a cover job you might as well get married and have a kid because that's the only way that you're good as a woman anymore oh poor <laughs> <laughs> you could be a part time model i was saying but that only earlier part of the time yeah. <laughs> uh fly to the concords what a show um should we talk about the return of spider lady yes yes this is what i kind of loved about spider lady because we saw her at in the initial scene you know she has spider legs and she obviously starts crawling she gets on, very scuttly yeah and then she crawls down the side of the hotel or apartment complex but this is the oh, first so time cool. that we see her coming down from a web. From her vag web. From her vagina, which yeah. I thought was super fucking cool. I I wish our listeners could see all of your gestures for all of these things. <laughs> um, and speaking of things that don't make that much sense, she has this conversation with the regenerating baddie and he's like, finish them. And she's like, I won't disappoint you. I'm sorry I didn't finish them before. And then she's like, oh, by the way, we got the information from the sample back. Wink, wink. And he's like, oh, good. What did we learn? And she's like, it's just what we expected. It's genetic. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry. This, his semen is genetic? Well done. <laughs> Well done, nineteen eighties <laughs> science. <laughs> uh, well, she did her job, though. She did her job. She got the sample. Yeah. Yeah. Nearly chopped yeah. off his wang. So, yeah. she kind of kills them. No, she did. She does. Yeah. She genuinely does. Yeah, death happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she does kill them, and this is where we get the uh, reveal that. Giuseppe is like been the guy that's keeping them alive. He he revives them, and he's also been kind of pulling the strings. But also kind the of pulls movie. them into Dream World because because they kind of wake up in Dream World and then have consensual doing it. Yeah. Well, we got to talk about Spider Woman when <laughs> like well, I'm not I'm not we're not done, done with Spider Woman <laughs> yeah, yet. Like I mean, we have the dress reveal, like that, and then they go through a tunnel with its romantic music. And then spider webs start showing up. Wait, hold on. What's yeah. the dress reveal? When uh, Makie has to change her clothes. Yeah, they stop oh, at some yeah. kind of like random place and she puts it on. She's yeah, and like... then she walks over to the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Taki has some kind of quip that's a callback from earlier in the movie or something. Yes. Oh, God. What was about it? About her being a model. Or uh, about her being perfect or him being perfect or something. Yeah. yeah. It was well. I thought that was 
a decent callback. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a nice cute moment between all of the rape. Yeah, I was going to say, better yeah. than rape. Yeah. And then uh, the spider lady gets them, and they start... I forget exactly how it happens, but she ends up tying them up upside down, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. with vagina web. Mm-hmm. With the vagina webs, and says, I'm going to slice you to pieces. Yeah. And it's just maniacally laughing and cutting them. And then yeah. it proceeds to do a lot of slicing. Yeah. Yeah. And you just see like the blood dripping down from their hands. Like they don't, they, this, they don't show this. They don't show. They were like, this is too dark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tentacles fine. Uh, this not, I did think that was pretty effective though. Mm-hmm. The, that the blood dripping down the hands, yeah. especially mm-hmm. cause you're like, how can you kill the main character? Um, you know, and that's, that's such a typical thing for horror films where you don't get other genres typically where this person you're following and relating to throughout the film is suddenly gone. And it's like, oh, I'm lost now as an audience. I, that was, that was my guy. <laughs> like, what, what do I do? Yeah. But immediately it kind of takes it back. It's like, just kidding. (laughs) Um, And and they end up in dream sex land. Yeah. I also want to say that when she is webbing them, it is so gross. Yeah. Like, because I think Taki's like on his knees at one point and she's just opens her legs like super wide crotch out. And it's just like, just. Got to make room for the teeth, Joe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to describe it aside from like, it looks like she's like got a bullwhip of web and it's just disgustingly going over Taki and Makie. It just looks so gross. So I thought that was pretty effective. Yeah. Yeah. And her arms, the way they are they they bend and stuff. It's just so <laughs> it's very, it's very effective and like creepy and like what you kind of see in like Japanese horror movies where people bend awkwardly. Yes. Yeah. Um, the contortion. You know? um, Again, body horror. Yeah. 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 And this was another image that I forgot that I even remembered from childhood is when she gets electrocuted uh, because she's hanging upside down on the web and she's slicing him. And then like a current of like electricity shoots right down there. Yeah. And she hits the ground and is like, just like a bug on its back. Yeah. It does the dead leg thing, which I thought was kind of, kind of a visual gag if you ask me. (laughs) What, like when the wide shot is funny in the close-up it's like a little traumatizing yeah. you know yeah. I, sent, I sent joe a gif of that yeah <laughs> i love getting those gifts throughout the day hey check out what i found it's just like a woman pulsating dead on the ground <laughs> i'm at work and i'm just looking down at my phone and i'm like oh yeah this horror that those gifts seem like they'll be like filed for evidence at some point <laughs> <laughs> it's okay because i send her the uh the uh, puppet master from Ghost in the Shell true, uh, pulsating as well, having a seizure. Yeah. So you know we have our we have our little in jokes. We have fun here. <laughs> yeah, you guys seem delightful. Horrifying each other. <laughs> None of you guys have my phone number, right? <laughs> <laughs> you made the mistake of responding to my email, so now I do. No. <laughs> Damn that email signature. <laughs> All right, so what happens next? This Now they're in spiritual sex world. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this was happening in their heads and they're not sure either. It's a little bit trippy. You don't know if this is like their souls joining in union as they die or something. And then she's like crying these happy tears um, after they've had sex. And I just turned to Joe and I went, is this what consent feels like? (laughs) Are these tears of consent? (laughs) Yeah, she does cry, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. And then she says something that makes no sense because we haven't had any backstory. She's like, my people can't cry. (laughs) What? Like, why? Right? Doesn't like, how are we supposed to know that? Like, if we would have known that, that would have been really powerful. Yeah. Right. If that was like a thing throughout the movie, like so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, Terminator Two does it better with like with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's that's just one of those things that for me, I'm just like, okay, they don't cry. Yeah. Cool. I just like it just did not fuck me. Like Terminator Two ends with like Arnold saying like, "I now understand why you cry." 
like he understands why he was crying because they just referenced it earlier in the movie you know mm-hmm. like so if you have a big moment it needs to have like some i wish i knew anything about these creatures yeah they, they don't get That's any all. backstory there's no world building really for the black world which definitely hinders the movie I yeah. think there's so many things that hinder this movie. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of the, yeah. but I think that it's one of the things that really holds it back because I would want to know more about how that world works and why we need to have a treaty. How do you, I don't even know the basic concepts of how do they enter the human world? Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, this is based off of a manga called The Black Guard. Yeah. And I don't know what kind of detail that goes into. Um, I read somewhere that's also based off of, book so i don't know if there was a book and a graphic novel or if the thing that i read was referring to the graphic novel as a book i'm not Mm. quite sure but also this film was originally supposed to be 30 minutes and it became 80 minutes so i'm wondering how much less information we could have gotten yeah so um there's a ton of like catholic iconography towards the end of this this film mm-hmm. i i started reading something about some of the iconography in this and why so much of of japanese films that show christianity they show catholicism it had to do with apparently there is like a big influence in the romantic period on some art in japan so they were sort of borrowing these ideas from europe during um the romantic period and during that time you know protest Prodi- Prodi- protestants weren't really a thing yet it was it was all kind of catholicism Mm -hmm. um and that's why there's so many vampires in sort of japanese literature and anime it comes comes out of that sort of time period um and also why there's some random sort of iconography that's that's very um catholic that's interesting i did not know that i didn't know the vampires were like a catholic thing well the cross is like what scares them away yeah right i'm stupid but yeah, I, I I agree that I think that there is a lot of Christian Catholic iconography like and this is going to be like a weird one. And I think that it's, you're just going to have to go along with me on this one. But I think even at, during some parts of the tentacle thing, it does look like uh, there's a famous statue of Mary holding Jesus after he'd been crucified and killed where he's like laying across her arms the tentacle thing is kind of holding Machia like that Mm. for a split second. I agree with you on that. Yeah. And it it does have kind of a similar vibe because uh, there's also a scene, I think, um, I think in the opening of death note, there is a, or maybe throughout the series, there's a scene. No, it's actually in the opening of death note where Ray Pember's wife is holding uh, Ray Pember, uh just like mary's holding jesus and that mm. so yeah i guess that there is a lot of catholicism and christian catholic imagery throughout anime that i just never really thought about or realized how much of a stretch is it to talk about the crown of thorns and tentacles fucking go for it <laughs> i didn't want to expand on that actually <laughs> um, i just remember when we got to this end and in the church and we have the like crucifixes i was just like they threw religion into this yeah, like yeah. at right. the end because it's not i mean with the point that joe brought up which i could see with the tentacle scene but the rest of the movie doesn't really have shades of it mm-hmm. and the end is just all yeah uh catholicism like that church scene like the guy gets his head impaled on the crucifix literally like, they weren't cross yeah. to forehead yeah yeah like they yeah. were not shying away from it i mean and the church bells are are ringing which mm-hmm. you know i think is supposed to uh, symbolically show this union that's been created mm-hmm. and it's uh you know a marriage of mm-hmm. these two souls and um she's wearing a white dress that's a sheet that looks like a wedding dress mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and now she's found this like purity you know she, and she's not getting raped anymore and she's also this sort of like blushing bride and this innocent you know woman and it's kind of it's like she's it's like a born again moment I, I mean literally being born again you <laughs> yeah. know yeah yeah i felt like this ending really uh when you meet giuseppe and you find out he's the guy this guy is gonna like solve peace i wanted to see what he knew and how he was gonna do it and I felt let down that I didn't get a chance to see him at a 
treaty meeting to see him being smart or see that he had like some something you know yeah like he was kind of the awkward professor yeah i mean it's like in star wars where uh you meet yoda and you're like Mm. what is this bumbling guy and you're like oh he's testing your patience and he's actually really smart jedi that knows everything he's going to train you like i was like what is giuseppe's thing we kind of get a twist but then that twist comes on another twist so it's like i was like wait what this is what it's all been about Giuseppe is my least favorite character in this. Like, like you said oh, at the beginning yeah. of this, Vance, I f- he doesn't feel like he fits in this movie, and he's just annoying and gropy and molesty, and yeah. I, I just, I feel like he was supposed to be this comedic relief, yeah. and it doesn't work. I think Giuseppe's my least favorite character ever <laughs> of anything <laughs> i do have to say that i did love that taki and makie like never humored him like he's yeah. like oh come on mm-hmm. check out this playboy yeah. and they're like stop yeah. it we're trying yeah. to protect you from fucking dying there's a peace treaty that's supposed to bring peace for 500 years you're like yeah but i want to go to the brothel ha, ha, ha. Yeah. come here makie yeah. let me touch your boobs and she's like no he's like, <laughs> he's like my plan was always to molest you so that taki would hook up with you and impregnate you <laughs> Like yeah. what? what? <laughs> yeah, of course, that makes like, sense. Yeah, yeah, like it makes no sense at all. This movie stinks. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Should we talk about this fight scene or just skip over it? No, we gotta talk about the fight scene. All right, go ahead and talk about it. <laughs> I don't really quite remember. Uh, it. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. there was the shadow that was cast. Oh, that was cool. That was actually Mr. Cool. Shadow was kind of sending oh, people back that, into the that shadow. was Mr. Sh- oh, I'm an idiot. I thought the pinstripe guy was Mr. Yeah. Shadow. It is the same person. Right? I think it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, yeah, because he yeah, regenerated. He came back to life. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not an idiot. Boo! Yeah, I'm not <laughs> uh, an idiot. Yeah. 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 Uh, you're an idiot. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Man. I'm sorry, Joe. She just sad tromboned me, Vance. <laughs> um, this is when Maki really stops fighting. And maybe it's because she's holding a sheet onto her body. Yeah, but we've seen her naked the whole movie. That's true, yeah. but usually yeah. not uh, when she wanted to be. Yeah, okay. And not now that she's she's going to be a mother. Yeah. yeah, that's true. All right. Well, uh, Giuseppe brings them back to life using psychic powers that he somehow has. Sure. Yep. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's how you brought us back to life. And I'm like, oh, cool. That was never <laughs> a thing, but cool. We've and all now, accepted that, I guess. Yeah, and now he can move around really quick and has lightning powers, and he's fighting tentacles coming out of a statue. Mm-hmm. And then they fight on the rooftop, Yep. and Mr. Shadow shoots out these, like, the shadow on the ground that sucks you in, which is kind of cool. That yeah, that was pretty cool. rad. Yeah, a uh, good visual. Um, I forget exactly how they get out of that. Yeah, I was just say, is it gun? Well, I mean, yeah, Maki <laughs> is just not fighting back anymore because she's gotten to be too pure Virgin Mary at this point. And uh, Taki is, he like, doesn't he do something frustrating where he's like just not shooting his gun for some reason? Yeah, he, he shoots uh, Mr. Shadow once and then he's like bumbling and like holding the gun and you're yeah. like oh i can't believe i'm falling like keep yeah. shooting bro <laughs> yeah. and and then uh we see giuseppe has fallen prey to the shadow but then he can come back out yeah of his own accord yeah. he kind of like grabs an ankle or something right oh yeah he uh he comes out closer to him and grabs right. the guy's ankle yeah. yeah i think this is the point too where Machia has evolved because she's pregnant and she can disappear and reappear anywhere that she wants and... she's been trans modified yeah so stupid. Yeah. Yes. They start, at the end of this movie, they just start throwing things at <laughs> just start it. throwing yeah. words. Like, Guess what? Giuseppe's got psychic powers and electric powers that you've yeah. vaguely seen all movie. But, <laughs> oh, also, guess what? The real peace treaty is Taki and Machia boning. Also, guess what? She gets transmodified when she's pregnant. And guess <laughs> what? This shadow guy regenerated. Guess what? Jesus. Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah enough and how, how do they kill him uh, i don't know who Somehow cares he, i mean <laughs> is this where he gets shot in the mouth is this what it happens this is know. no this is this is when he gets the crucifix to the forehead um well, and there's that, a lot of lightning going on does he literally just like trip and fall on this thing i can't remember now. i know maki jumps it. off maki jumps off the church in slow motion and she's like floating and flying yeah i feel like she did something <laughs> 
That wraps it uh, up. Yeah. <laughs> then we get the we get the Taki and Maki Maki uh, walking out of the church, being like, "Oh, well, I guess the mission's complete and the peace treaty's happening." And Maki is kind of like, "I'm in love with you now." And Taki's like, "Whoa, slow your roll, bitch." Yeah. <laughs> well, I wrote this down. I wrote this down. It's like Taki isn't anti-black world at all, but at the end, they make him seem like he's like, "I don't know if I could ever be with a black world demon." And like you have never had that issue. Yeah, it's like, bro, you've been with three in this movie, in this one night. The spider <laughs> yeah. lady, the vagina chest lady, who I I'm saying he was with. I don't. I'm not was. saying he was. With. Yeah. Well, we beg to differ. Uh, <laughs> and now, uh, Machie. So he's, yeah. dude. He's a more of a playboy in the black world than the human world, bro. <laughs> yeah. Again. I mean, how many of those encounters were what he expected and what he wanted? I don't know. Hey, they got his genetic on file. That's yeah. true. It was what they expected. Yeah. How does this baby say, uh, unite the world? Who knows? It's Jesus. Because it seems like a lot of the people from the dark world don't want it, this thing to happen. So. I think, again, it's, it's kind of like that ghost in the shell idea of this new creature that exists causing a lot of people anxiety also i felt like the sort of vigilantes for the the demons felt very neo-nazi you know because they kind of want to keep their race pure and want to destroy anybody who's not a demon that's a good point but normally in this you would have like some human people not want to be with the demon people that we call demons in this world yeah there's no and there's not a lot of humans that are anti black world yeah which is weird they seem you know? kind of okay i mean they they kind of they kind of act like it's a necessary evil it's like it's a thing and you have to deal with it yeah. it's like not everybody thinks you know that mm -hmm. alligators or crocodiles should should be around it's like well they're yeah. here <laughs> but but no one no one's like really freaked out about him being partners with her no you know yeah and there, there were some descriptions uh if you read some synopses that kind of make it sound like that's going to be a point of tension because it mm -hmm. would be in a movie mm. normally. Yeah. And and so it's like, will they be able to work together? And immediately he's yeah. like, no, I can work with you. Yeah, he's like, I work alone. They're like, here's a partner and she's not human. He's like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. They're like, why? Why not just have her be his partner to start with now? Like this doesn't even matter. Yeah, there are some yeah. odd choices. Yeah. Odd choices. Like I would, I would argue that this movie could have been really it has all the pieces to be like a pretty solid movie yeah for instance like if we would have found out somewhere in the middle movie middle part of the movie that the plan was actually for them to get together you know as opposed to the old guy yeah so it's like some dramatic if, irony that goes throughout it yeah so you get that like tension and you're like oh that was the plan the whole time and then you see them work through that plan yeah. you know having known it uh, instead of like every all the information gets dumped on you in the last like ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the 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 plot of this is just it it doesn't hold up. And like you said, like the last ten minutes is just a load of information. And this was all. A, it, it's one of those things that I hate in movies where all of this improbable things happen and it all is comes together. And then it's one person like this was all a part of my plan. And it's like what. What are you talking about? Like, there's no, all of these coincidences happen and you somehow made it all happen because this was the plan. Like, obviously the screenwriter did not have a plan. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see what the, the manga's like, because what part of the plan is I let you guys die, yeah, bring you back to life. <laughs> what a <laughs> shitty plan, dude. Like, <laughs> like, if that was part of the plan, it's like, no, we don't, we don't need to do this. How about a, a little soundtrack talk before we get into the amp scores? Okay. I thought the soundtrack was pretty decent. It was like 80s synthy. Yeah, I thought I, it fit I enjoyed very well. Some of that. Um one of the 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 reason why I've seen scenes from this movie is because one of my favorite bands called The Midnight, they for their music videos a lot of times they just take footage from old movies and make splice it together to make it a music video. And the music video for their song Vampires is footage from this movie. Not the least explicit parts of uh, this movie are in that. So uh, when we were like, yeah, let's do Wicked City. I was like, okay, that looked like a pretty interesting movie. And then 
we watch it and it's actually the horror show of, of this fucking thing. But <laughs> yeah, that's how I know this uh, the animation. But the soundtrack is very 80s, very synthy. It seemed a little too loud at certain points. Mm. But uh, yeah, what are we going to include the voice acting in this as well in the soundtrack portion? The the floor is open. I thought Taki's voice acting was dog shit. I see. Uh, I thought Giuseppe's was dog shit. Everybody else was okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, 80s music in an 80s movie? Sure. Um, <laughs> like, like it, it, we're so used to like, we're so used to like Stranger Things and stuff. And be like, oh, they went with that retro 80s sound. And it's like, no, this is just yeah. the music that they made then. I feel like this is one of the first thing I've seen where I'm like, <laughs> Oh, they did have music exactly like this then. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just an homage to it. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as the voice acting goes, like I mentioned Giuseppe, he just seems like a over-the-top anime character to me, um, voice-wise. So I can't even say that that was bad. I think that's their choice. Mm -hmm. uh, Taki, uh, Taki, I will say it was... I, I was curious to listen to the... Uh, to see the dub, the non-dub version to see mm. how that voice actor played it. Because I feel like there's a way to play. Like, he was so flat, but not flat. Like, he didn't have a lot of personality, but also the lines don't allow him to. Mm, so, mm. I don't know. But he's just too damn romantic. Yeah. yeah. I, I really liked him and Makie early on. I was like, I like this this team up. Yeah. Like, I thought they had good banter. I thought they had a good, like, he wasn't like, oh, you suck. You're too wild. It wasn't like... They were polar opposites, but they did have individual personalities. Yeah, um, and there was like a yeah. mutual respect between them because yeah. uh, she like saves his ass during that airport fight scene and he's kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, you're a fucking badass, all right, and you're yeah. hot? Fuck yeah. yeah. And then she's and, like, And we both okay. don't like Giuseppe? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, this guy's yeah. a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the soundtrack? Catherine and voice acting. Catherine. Well, I've said my piece about um, the music, I think. Um, voice acting, I I just, I it, I take it with a grain of salt when it's a 1987 movie that has a really low cell count and flashes at you a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm not, when I watch it, I don't watch really critically or listen really critically for the voice acting unless it's really, really <laughs> awful. Um, I didn't think that the ADR matched too badly okay yeah um i thought that it matched up pretty well um and i think that sometimes there are some forced choices for what kind of words they used in the dub that nobody uses but maybe they used in 1987 but i don't think they did um to to make some of that stuff fit um and obviously giuseppe's the worst i did say i did not care for the voice acting during the rape scenes Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I thought that it really downplayed sexual violence uh, in order to make an audience more comfortable with it, which I don't know. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good that's a good point where I, the downplay like they don't bring up the sexual assault stuff and make it seem like, oh, no, we have to save her from it or yeah. I need to be rescued. It just seems like it's something that happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shall we crank our amps to uh, see what we all thought about it or anything else to add from anybody else? Yeah, let's do it. Should we start with Vance, our guest? Yes, Vance. Uh, you guys do out of 11, right? It's out of 11. We're cranking the amp and it's out of 11. Uh, I am just going to go with a 7 out of 11. 7 11. High score for Wicked City. What brought you to that yeah. conclusion? Well, there's elements that I like, like the scenes that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, there, even the weird stuff, like the tentacle part, it's so weird and shocking, but it's done well, if that's exactly just what they want. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, it loses points because it's like, does that need, like, what is this doing to prevent, progress the story a bit, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm okay with the guy melting into the girl at the brothel because it actually does put the story forward, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, or at least you knew that's where he was going to go. It's kind of like a fly um, trap, you know, yeah. like the flies yeah. going in for the honey and then like it's stuck. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I guess the plan was to 
have him get a parasite that would later get her to i don't yeah, yeah. it's like if you think about it too much yeah. it'll break your brain yeah uh especially at the end when he's just like oh i'm going back to my job as a black guard yeah. i'm still shooting things with this gun yeah. that's the end of the movie because somebody's gotta keep this damn world safe <laughs> <laughs> i got uh, two mouths to feed <laughs> I got a double black guard for the rest of this. Um, for me, I'm going to crank my amp. I did not particularly enjoy Wicked City. There were some parts that I thought were cool. There were some animation parts. Like I, th- I think for me, the strongest bit of this movie was the animation. I thought it was really imaginative mm. and creative. Uh, but as anyone that listens to this podcast knows, I'm a big plot guy. And this plot is not very good, in my opinion. I did not enjoy the plot. Didn't enjoy uh, sitting through several uh, rape scenes, several seizure scenes, for lack of a better term. So with all of that in mind, I'm cranking the amp to 3 out of 11. Uh, Honestly, I'm not even going to justify this with an explanation. This is a a 2.5 for me. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Um... I, I question for you guys if you guys did any research. What uh what is the cult following behind this movie? Like what is it based off of? I think like, it, it I think the cult following behind it is just because it's old and shocking. Like uh, th- that's I think that that's probably the only thing. It was like one of probably one of the first of its kind that was like an adult anime that was like let's ch- step over the the, here's the line and we're stepping over i think it was the most sexually explicit anime that was made available and distributed quite early on compared to other animes Um, oh i know so (laughs) so yeah i think there is a shock factor there and um it was kind of the 80s when uh the tentacle thing got bigger in anime um and so i think this is one of the first introductions to that and apparently that caught on like fire (laughs) Yeah, I would think this would be the the thing that killed it. Right, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it was born and also died yeah. here. You're like, I thought I wanted to see that, but I don't. I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, I want to say thank you once again to Vance Tucker. Vance, thanks for coming on and being on the amp again. Really appreciate it, bud. Thanks for sitting through Wicked City with us. Thanks for uh, allowing me to be here for this oh, uh, weird absolutely. movie. <laughs> Vance, it was so great to have you back. Yeah, it's a pleasure as always. Maybe something lighter next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to think of something lighter next time. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been our episode on Wicked City. See you next time. Bye. Taki, I'm very, very disappointed in you. And in spite of that, you're one of the best black guards I've ever seen. But you're too goddamn romantic. You understand what I'm saying? That alone is your one fatal flaw. Thanks for listening to the Anime Movie Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at the Anime Movie Podcast, and you can reach out via email at the Anime Movie Podcast at gmail.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review, and tell a friend. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>